Welcome back guys, um, this is going to be part 6 of my video tutorial and in, in my previous part I saw you, um, well I basically showed you the edit, uh, how to do add new, how to add a new vendor category, right, in this example we will we'll look at into how to do 80% of the, our code. So as you can see right now, you know, we have to have a couple of things needs to happen here when we click this button. Of course, very first thing we have to show this new model window, and the other important thing that we have to do is, of course, you know, this corresponding data from here. Of course, we need to set it into those uh, model window. So, and then once that is done, and next thing we have to, of course, you know, we have to, when we click this button right here, this is when we basically post the data into back in server and behind the scene of course we'll persist the, these data into the SQL Server database. Alright. Let's look at into the code on how to do that one, okay? So um, let's start looking let's first look at into the our vendor vendor category here. As you can see right here, the one of the button is the edit button. And this button has an ng directive, ng click directive set to it, and it has a method called toggle edit model. And we did when we call this method, we also pass the instance of vendor category. A as you remember from the previous video right here, you know, in my uh, this row, I have an ng repeat uh, directive which is set to the vendor categories right here. Vendor category is nothing, just an array object that contains inside the controller, right? Vendor a category controller object. And we are setting some of the property like a vendor name and vendor description. Okay, let's go back into the controller, the Angular controller, and this and look it into the code that is inside this method called toggle edit model model. Okay, this is the method right here, starting on line number 96. I have method, right, an anonymous method. As you can see, it takes the vendor category. And then I have an object defined in this scope called um, vendor category edit data. Let me show you that object first and how th the initial properties are set. This is my object right here. I have an object of vendor category edit data, and it has some property like model. So initially, by default, it has been set to false, and vendor category name we don't know what the category going to be in the beginning. That's why it's been set to empty string. And same thing for the description, and same thing for the vendor category ID, which is basically ID, a primary key of the of the of the table. Well, it's not really a model right now. You know, I'm using the view model, as you know, it's just going to be the ID of that view model, vendor category ID. Okay, so all we're doing into here, into this method, basically we're setting the values. We're setting the current values. When I say current values, basically when you click this button right here, this is the current value. All this value is now set into that property of that object. So basically, all of them are set. Just for example, you can see um, you can see what I mean. Like, let me uh, refresh this guy, and then if I do edit right here, you will see the name, this the vendor name in the pub. See the awesome office supplier, and, and the, of course it opens opens it up. It's the same thing for a computer supplier, provider, or whatever, right? Okay, that is all. It happened behind the scene. So all we're doing, all we have to do is basically set that property. Okay, that is all done. I, of course, you know you might you might be wondering. I have to do this one so that I can have the values in here into the pop-up model window, into the model window. Okay. Once our model window is open, now we can edit this information. The idea is, of course, you know, maybe this is not really, maybe there is spelling error or the name of the vendor category, name change, or description, you, maybe you don't need description anymore, or maybe you want to add additional information, or whatever, right? Okay, that is, 
Okay, this is up and, and and after the let's after this is done, let's look at into our markup for our edit vendor category. The, the markup is very simple. As, as, as you as for the add vendor category, yeah, for the add edit vendor category, also every all the markup is inside this model dialog. You know, custom Angular directive. And this property is very important. By default, as you can see, the show property of that is set to a false by default. Remember, as I showed you in that method, it's so that's why it's not visible. So, so right now, when the button gets clicked, this becomes visible. And then after that, I have a table, and I give. A, and the most important thing in here, just the ng model property, and I give some, you know. Um, ng model name like a vendor category name in this you know vendor category edit data vendor category name and the vendor description and all the way down here I have a button here and this button has a method called edit vendor category which is set to ng click right and when the button gets clicked this method gets fired and as you can see when this method gets called it gets executed a lot of things happen of course first thing you know it, the Angular behind the scene, Angular controller method would call the services, Angular services, and Angular services behind the scene calls the controller. So now, when you have the controller, you know, it's a server side controller. Server side controller calls the, um, of course, our data API. Our data API is, you know, the, you know, the vendor category, our repository pattern. And repository behind the scene, of course, persists the data into backend database. Okay, let me. Uh, <coughs> so just to, um, I have my SQL Server profiler running right here. I'll show you. You know, just to make sure I'm not. <laughs> it's everything is working as it should be. <coughs> Let's say this name right here, and the description is not right. It's very short. Maybe it's not correct. We have to edit this information. Um, Vendor, we have been doing business with them for a long time. Whatever, you know, it's okay. So at this point, if I, you know, go ahead and start my, um, it should persist that changes into back in database. This first right here, just look it into um, stack, I mean, you know, the profiler information right here. Only, we really care about this updated statement here, see? It issued an updated statement here into vendor category. This is the table that was where those information are saved. If you are, you know, following this um, tutorial for a while, and this is uh, like this, uh, we had different name before, but now you know this new name is that the field is get updated. Okay, that is all the. Of course, that's the logic it is. But like, let's look it into our code in our Angular code and our server side good how it happened okay next thing we're going to do is we can look at into this implementation of that method in our uh, angular js controller called vendor category controller okay so as you can see starting on line number 106 that goes all the way to around okay here, <coughs> I define a little object called vendor category view model, and then, okay, I'll, I'll tell you why I had to do something like this. Um, to understand why I created that little object inside that method, let's look it into our uh, server side controller. My controller vendor category controller. Okay. This is the this is the method that get called right behind the scene when that event when we click the button. So this is a vendor category view model, and it has as you know it has a couple of properties. Speak is a vendor name and the vendor description. Those two property. That's what I'm doing basically here. I'm creating an object called vendor category view model, and I have it, this object contains a couple of properties like vendor name vendor description and the ID. The ID of my view model.